North Seattle business blasts music to deter growing homeless camp. So, nothing else has worked. Hey, let's get a bank of speakers, put them up on top of the building, kind of that part of that security alarm system type deal. Let's crank up some classical music. That'll stop them. It's literally what a business is doing in Seattle, kind of a North Seattle area. Comcast building. They're cranking up the music to see if they can get the tents to go away. What's the deal? Did it work? Is it working? What's happening? Let's check this one out. Here we go. All right. Is North Seattle business fed up with a growing homeless encampment? It's been blasting music to get the people who are living there to leave. Now, we do have precedents for this, don't we? I mean, you remember a bunch of the psych ops that have happened over the years with the U.S. military. Let me just remind you of one that I came up with that was interesting. How the U.S. military used guns and roses to make a dictator give up. I'm going to do a little diversion. U.S. military invaded Panama in hot pursuit of the country's dictator, Manuel Noriega. Remember that? That was some wild times, right? In December of 1989, I was a sophomore in college. Those were the days. As he rapidly ran out of options, Noriega took refuge in the Vatican embassy in Panama City. In deference to diplomatic protocol, U.S. forces did not enter the embassy, but they did concoct a plan to smoke out Noriega. Uh, the plan involved music, mostly heavy metal and rock, with a few ballads thrown in. It was blasted on loudspeakers at deafening volumes around the clock. What did they play? What did they play that you want to know? They played Give It Up by Casey and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> That's a good one. They played No More, Mr. Nice Guy. That was uh, Alice Cooper and Paranoid by Black Sabbath. That's got that intro that's just, oh. So intense. You get the drift. What else did they play? Well, we've also got Welcome to the Jungle by GNR, One and Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi, and The End by The Doors. That's one of my favorite songs. That's a weird song. Follow the lyrics and that. You're like, ah, you're doing what with mom and dad? That's weird. Yeah. So we've got precedent for using sound, sound speakers to try and get people to do whatever it is that you want them to do. The encampment is stationed on a side street at North 128th Street and Stone Avenue North. We had a uh, shooting at a high school, probably less than half a mile away from this location. It's in an area of kind of, I'd say it's mid North Seattle. Seattle goes all the way up to technically it goes up to almost the county border, King County border. Um, and this is, this is probably eight or nine miles north and east of downtown Seattle. And so it's in an area where a lot of the homeless have been pushed out of downtown and they, you know, it's created pressure along the way. And this is one of those areas that's had a lot of homelessness and it's got a lot of, got a lot of crime going on. You've got, uh, you know, Highway 99 is just to the west of here and you've got, prostitutes walking up and down all day long because, you know, hanging out on the street has been deemed legal for prostitutes to do. The actual act of what they're doing is still illegal, but hanging out, they can do that all day long and nobody does anything. See, you've got a bunch of stuff going on in this area. It's not good for the area. So, These businesses are kind of taking matters into their own hands and Comcast in that area, they got a big warehouse, kind of one of those big metal warehouse type office looking buildings. And um, yeah, nearby business owners said the Comcast service center has been playing loud music from a surveillance system with a speaker for about a month now. The The loud music is described as classical or elevator music because they have to live with that music as well. They're inside that office complex or that building and they don't want to hear paranoid all day long, no matter how good it is. They don't want to hear the end. This is the end, my only friend. Yeah, and those are some epic songs, but you don't want to hear them blast it all day long at work. I mean, I would, well, you know, on my lunch break, but you got to be able to focus, right? No more Mr. Nice Guy. That's a good one, though. That's solid. I think Alice Cooper is wildly underrated. Saw him open up for Motley Crue a few years ago. Solid concert. Yeah, Alice Cooper, he's a great golfer on top of that. You wouldn't think that the, uh, you know, the 
grandfather of shock rock, you know, that whole makeup blood genre would uh, be a good golfer, but it, you know, he is crazy, right? Classical, all classical, all day long, said a body shop manager named Tyler. They came and asked us, hey, we're thinking about playing some loud music. See if we can get them to move away. And so what it is, it's this street right outside of Comcast. It's just lined with tents. And you know what that brings? It brings a whole host of illegal activities that no business wants to deal with. No business wants to have their employees drive up five days out of seven a week and think, okay, I'm going to park my car here. Is it going to get broken into? Or am I going to get assaulted walking from my car into my place of business? You know, maybe you've got an adjoining uh, business somewhere nearby and you're like, all right, is today the day that folks from that homeless encampment come and rip off my store? Do they rip off my employees' cars? All that stuff. So that's literally what's going on. Let's crank up some classical music and we'll just see how this goes. Nearby business owners told Como News that they don't mind the loud music because they too are frustrated about the theft. Drug trafficking and garbage piling up, which they believe are a result of the encampment. You know, when people say they believe, it's, it's allegedly from the encampment. Everybody knows what the deal is. Everybody knows what the drill is. And that's why businesses are willing to go to such extents of, hey, we're asking all the other businesses around, do you mind if we crank some music? Tough one though. I mean, is this going to work? They turn up the music, but as you can see, it didn't make a difference, said business owner John Yang. It's unsafe for our employees to park their cars near Comcast. It's also a deterrent for people to visit our businesses and it's a safety issue with a nearby high school. Hey, you, you want to send your 16, 17, 18-year-old daughter to school with a bunch of you know people from homeless encampments who may not be in their right mind? I'm not saying all of them are you know, participating in this. But if you watch any amount of homeless encampment videos, any documentaries, invariably, somebody from within the encampment will be interviewed and they will be asked the question, how many people within this encampment do you think are on drugs? And invariably, the answer is, well, everybody, everybody's on drugs at this encampment. I can't speak for other encampments, but this one, they're all on drugs. And when you talk to other folks that are, you know, trying to help people in the homeless encampments, oftentimes, if you ask them, they'll say, well, I mean, it's probably like 80%. It might be 90%. It could, it could be everybody. So unlikely that the reason you live in an encampment oftentimes is because you're living that lifestyle. And that's what you want to do. And if you take offers of housing from other entities, whether it's the county or the city or whatever it be, there's rules and regulations that come with that housing oftentimes. These folks don't want to take that because they don't want to live those lifestyles. They don't want to live within the rules. They want to just keep doing their own thing and have people give them stuff and take stuff from the community in the form of robberies. So that's literally what we've got going on. And businesses are fed up to the point where they're like, all right, let's crank up some classical. Now, we'll just see how this goes. Yang said that their dealership got security after crime started creeping in. Okay. Makes sense. And that is one of the things, I think that's one of the things in downtown Seattle that I've, ta I've talked about that. I've podcasted on that is that in downtown Seattle, the level of private security right now is off the charts. Uh, Uniqlo, it's a store. I think it's a Chinese store. I always want to say it's Japanese, but I believe it's a Chinese store and I've bought a bunch of stuff. And for the price, it's really good stuff. They've got some workout stuff, workout shirts that I'm, that I still have and I still wear. And they're probably four or five years old and they were like 10 bucks. So it's one of these really bright stores, like yellow. You walk in there and you go, ah, do I need to put on my sunglasses? And they've got just, you know, stacks and stacks of affordable clothes that are really pretty fashionable. They're not the greatest of quality, but for the price, they're pretty good. Well, downtown Seattle, we had Uniqlo just open up literally like a block away from the blade. I mean, you can basically see the blade from where this new Uniqlo sto store is. And management of Uniqlo said, yeah, we like to come into areas and help the community. And you're like, nah, you signed up a lease and you're just going to go in there and you're just going to do it. But one of the reviews on this store that I was reading was it felt a little bit like it had a military presence out in front. 
because that's what you need if you are operating a retail establishment in a Seattle or a Portland or whatever. The Uniqlo corporate has enough of a budget to pay for ongoing security to basically try and stop the shoplifters, stop people from smashing your windows, all of that. And the bigger companies and the bigger apartments and the bigger condos in downtown Seattle, they have all gone to a system of private security. So if you take a walk around, and I've shot this video, and you can see it in some of the YouTube channels here on uh, News for Reasonable People, you can see the private security. I mean, they're bored out of their minds because – not much happens on like a Wednesday at two in the afternoon, right? Unless you just got some nut job walking around that happens to be carrying a hammer. That stuff does happen. And that's what those folks are there for, the security. But it's like really random events that happen when security has to do something. Otherwise, they're just walking around, you know, an apartment complex or a building and, you know, nothing's going on. You got people walking in, doing their security code to get in the front door and going up to their 14th floor and you know, doing their thing. So for the most part, there isn't a need for security. But if you have a retail store where people are going to be inclined to go in and just walk out with stuff, that's a lot of what has happened in downtown Seattle that I think folks aren't really focusing on is how we know that there aren't enough police in Seattle to make a go of it. So if you have enough of a budget, you can hire private security and you can make your store relatively safe right? Relatively safe. If we didn't have that overnight security, we would lose cars, parts of cars, said Yang. Come on News reached out to the city's homeless response team asking what the plan is to get the folks into a shelter. Now, that's the wrong, that's the wrong question, right? When are you guys going to, you know, get people into the help? That's the, that's the question that they're supposed to ask. That's the question they're supposed to ask. Because we all know they're going to come through, they're going to clear out this encampment, one or two people from the encampments going to take a night or two of shelter because why not? Maybe they're tired of living in their tent in Seattle when it's, you know, snow. There's still snow on the ground here. It's been a week or so, week and a half. Maybe they're tired of, you know, waking up and just freezing in their tent. They're going to take a night or two. But for the vast majority of folks living in these encampments, they're not going to take the offers of housing. So getting the folks into a shelter – yeah, those folks could get into a shelter now if they wanted to, but they don't want to, they don't want to abide by the rules because they're living outside of those rules. And that's just how it goes. Now, a lot of the stories say, Hey, we've, you know, we've never had anybody come by and talk to us from the city about getting into a homeless encampment. Well, that's because this whole encampment thing is such a fluid moving situation. You got people moving in, you got people moving out whatever, you know, time the people coming out and talking to them about getting into housing, you know, uh, they're not hanging out there 24 seven, they're going from encampment to encampment to encampment. So oftentimes, what you'll hear is somebody that just happened to not be there, ah, they've never reached out to me. Well, that's because you were off doing who knows what else when they came by. So, you know, officials said the United Care team has been working with Comcast businesses and neighbors for weeks and the site is on the list for a resolution. So what they'll do is they'll come out, they'll post some signs, they'll come back out, they'll talk to some people, put a bunch of people's names on a piece of paper and, you know, nothing will happen and sweep will happen and those folks will get kicked to the curb. They'll get kicked, you know, block down the road. They'll just go somewhere just a little bit further away from where it's happening. And then once the site is clean, they'll just move right back in. That's literally what they're doing. City officials also said they did receive they, they said they did receive one formal noise complaint about the loud music from a member and when the UCT community relations staff unified care team yep reached out to Comcast the issue was resolved. So they turned it down a scooch, right? Or they turned the music off. There's a tiny home village right next to the camp, but it's not yet open. Business owners hope the campers will accept the resolution. They won't. And plus, whatever number of tiny homes are in there, those have already been taken by folks that have been on the waiting list for years. So that's just kind of how this goes. You don't just build a village, a tiny little house village, and then have people, you know, from nearby get thrown in there. There, there's, there's such demand for tiny homes relative to beds in a shelter. You know, you get your own individual little tiny house. All right. Everybody wants that because then they can kind of still do what they want within their own little tiny home and, 
you know, they follow some of the rules, they'll be okay. So you just got a lot of stuff going on. So that's why these businesses are literally at the point where they'll try anything. They'll try anything within the confines of the law. Well, that's the crazy thing because the people who are impacting their businesses operate totally outside of the law. So you've got this duality going on that's just, you know, businesses having a tough time. And so we pay business and occupation taxes and the city of Seattle is very expensive to do businesses, business in, and it's just not encouraging to do business in the city of Seattle, said Yang. So yeah, like what we're seeing down in Portland, businesses are moving out. That is the next logical step. Granted, this isn't downtown Seattle, but you know, where are you going to go with commercial space? Probably that inexpensive in the Seattle market. You're going to have to go further out. All right. You're going to have to deal with that. And then it takes away from some of your ability to do business with the people that you've set up relationships with over years and years and years of doing business with. So these businesses are between a rock and a hard place. And so they're, you know, they're playing some music. They're cranking it up to 11. Remember that one on Spinal Tap? Yeah. Our amps go up to 11. That's one more than 10. Made absolutely no sense. But that's why it was so funny. And it was, you know, part of the Spinal Tap lore. Did they play classical music at 11 from the Comcast speakers? No, probably not. Plus, it didn't. It's probably not going to work because, you know, these people are so whacked out on drugs. Does loud classical music have any impact on them? Mm, I don't think so. But it's an approach. It's one more thing that we can kind of talk about. All right. Oh, we did do that, too. It didn't really work, but you know, they tried it. No go. All right. That's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. Catch up soon. If you want to check out reasonabletv.com, that's our subscription service. We've got content there that we can't show in other places. Also, the, and, and you can check, kind of check out everything. You just can't access the actual videos that are subscriber only. You can take a look and see what's going on. We've also got a Discord channel, Reasonable TV. Discord channel. If you want to take, you know, uh, stories and upload them there, you're more than welcome to, welcome to. I've got a bunch of people that are uploading story content there. And um, I see everything and I'll make comments too. So if you want to reach out to me, go to our Discord channel, reasonabletv.com. You can type away your heart's content and let us know. We're kind of getting that stuff going. So love to have you. Love to see you there. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now. Bye for now.